Today's guest is Dr. Jonathan Leary. He's the visionary founder and CEO of Remedy Place, a revolutionary social wellness club with establishments in New York and Los Angeles, and plans to create a global footprint with brick and mortar locations spanning North America and beyond. A true trailblazer in modern wellness and self-care, Dr. Leary seamlessly transitioned his clinical practice as a world-renowned concierge wellness doctor into the unprecedented launch of Remedy Place. Okay, listen, this place is so cool. Let me just get real with you guys. It is so cool. Just go to their website, remedyplace.com. Just seriously do it, okay? (laughs) If you're not driving or something, just open up your web browser real quick and just type in remedyplace.com because it is like so drool worthy and it's going to give you a little more context for who you're listening to is really cool and it's cool to hear how he how he went on this journey um and he's such a good vibe you're, you're gonna love dr leary so um let's hear a little more of what they have he has to say so at the intersection of design right the design is cool holistic self-care and human connection so that's what they're combining here dr leary and remedy place are architecting a profound shift in the landscape of the 10 trillion dollar plus healthcare industry So responding to a surge in demand from a market poised for exponential growth, Remedy Place has launched a global events division and introduced a collection of holistic technologies ushering in a dynamic new era of self-care. So yeah, like he mentions in the episode, like they, you know, are, have done huge events, including things with Coachella and, you know, big brands that you've heard of, like, it's really cool what he's created. Um, and yeah, just to give you a little more background on him. So he, um, started in chiropractic care, becoming, getting his doctorate there, really going into functional health, um, became very high demand very quickly, but he always had the vision of this place and he went for it and it's really cool. He is a sought after speaker in health and wellness. Um, and he's been featured in top media outlets from Vogue to the New York times. Um, and yeah, he's awesome. What a vibe. Uh, What a great interview. We kind of like start riffing on some health topics and I was just like laughing because I'm like, I feel like I'm listening to myself. (laughs) I was like, breach. But yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. I know you guys will just enjoy the convo, um, and come learn a little bit more about Remedy Place and, um, the importance of social connection. Like he's really, I love that he's pushing for this of like, he's really trying to make it like a social club where you can meet like-minded people who are on the same path as you, which we all know can be an issue for those of you who are embarking on a health journey alone without anybody else in your life, you know? So just lots of great stuff going on here. And then we get into a little bit of nitty gritty with like IV drips and hyperbaric oxygen and you know, the applications of a lot of these things. So. Yeah, it's a fun one. Go, let's go ahead and dive in. Here is Dr. Jonathan Leary. Okay, so Dr. Leary, um, you got your background in chiropractic. You got your doctorate of chiropractic care. And then you slowly started to evolve into what you do now with Remedy Place. And first of all, I, w- I mean, just to kind of lay it out, what is Remedy Place? And then let's kind of like talk about the whys behind creating it. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to start with the why? Or to sure. Be. Yeah, let's do, let's go for it. Yeah, you know, I always knew that I wanted to be a doctor. I thought I was going to go the traditional medical route. My mom and my sister are both worked in the hospital setting when I was growing up. And when going through undergrad and my pre-med schooling, I obviously had to volunteer and shadow and do everything in my power to get as nice of a resume possible so I could get into med school. And I think over those years, I just realized, I'm like, wait, this kind of isn't what I imagined. You know, I was like, a hospital setting is stressful. You know, patients aren't happy. It's uh, not only not great for the actual patients, because it's, you know, scary and people are nervous and they're sick, but also for the doctors, you know, they overworked, not sleeping, not healthy, overly stressed away from their family. And I'm like, wait, is this how I want my life to be? And is this how I want to take care of people. And that's what kind of led me to go into this alternative medicine route. It wasn't even really for alternative medicine. You know, when I first started my degree, it was really just, hey, like this will increase my scope so I can treat and diagnose anything. Just like in the state of California, a chiropractor is a primary care physician. They just can't prescribe meds or puncture the skin. So I was like, oh, like I'll, I'll do this just so I can treat and then I'll figure out how I want to treat people. And it was so interesting because when I moved to LA when I was 22 to start my doctorate, 
that's when I started working on Remedy Place. And that was really just to, at first, it was how do I create an environment that's different? So I wanted it to feel like this luxury club, but that, you know, a new version of a clinic. And then the, the social side and everything else that got added to it really was built over the years. And I think during the four years of my doctorate, every Sunday I worked on that business plan, graduated, went to the bank, thought I could get a business loan, quickly realized the woman kind of laughed at me. She's like, sir, you have no money and all the student loan debt. How am I supposed to give you a loan? And I was like, that's why I need a loan. Um, but then I had a pivot and I actually created a concierge practice in sports medicine. And it was just a non-surgical, non-drug approach to surgery prevention and chronic pain rehabilitation. And that was like, okay, this is my new approach. I'm going to do this. Started taking on some patients, had some really big public success stories. And my practice kind of blew up. And I kind of just became known for the guy that you would go to if you didn't want to get surgery after being told you had to. But then I quickly realized that I wasn't scalable. And I had a long wait list. And, you know, it was amazing. I was helping so many people. But one of my patients looked at me and she's like, John, you know, if you want to change healthcare, how are you going to do that if you see one patient at a time? And that's when I brought Remedy Place's business plan back back to the table and I started working on it every week. And for five years, I got to just do my own clinical evidence and my own market research and listen to my patients and what worked, what didn't work, what were they willing to do, what were they not willing to do, what were their common lifestyle habits. And I just one by one started creating more and more solutions to all those problems while also learning the business side and while learning how to raise money. And then four and a half years ago, I was able to open the first club. Nice. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. And like, so um, what are some of the things that Remedy Place offers? So people have kind of an idea of what it is. Yeah. So it's the world's first social wellness club. So it's a whole entire club centered around self-care, but made social. So it's not like a, we don't do anything fitness. We don't do anything spa or beauty. It's all just self-care and alternative medicine, but everything has the option to either do by yourself or you can make it social and do it with somebody else. So when you call and make a reservation, you know, we ask, you know, is it for party one or a party of five or six? And it's everything in there from contrast suites with sauna and co-plunges to vitamin IVs, vitamin injections, functional medicine, hyperbaric chambers, cryotherapy, lymphatic massage devices, red light therapy, uh, chiropractic, physio, Chinese medicine, cupping, acupuncture, infrared saunas. And then we have our our infamous breathwork ice bath class. So we're the first place in the world to offer uh, an ice bath, an ice bath in a class format. So just like you book into your favorite workout, here you book into your breathwork ice bath class. So every 30 minutes, the new class starts. Everyone goes through 11 minutes of breathwork, and then they pick a song, and we coach them to up to six minutes in the ice bath. Yeah. And breath work before, just I want to highlight that first thing because I know a lot of my people are into this kind of stuff. If you haven't yeah. done breath work before hole plunging ice baths, you got to do it. It's absolutely yeah. insane how much more control you have over your stress response when you do that. Yeah. Like my experience doing that has been like, instead of it feeling um, like, I mean, uh, granted, there's always like, wow, it's cold, but it feels more euphoric. Like I get that euphoric, like I don't want to get out, <laughs> you yeah. know, at, at six minutes. I'm like, I want to like dunk my head under and it feels like almost like orgasmically amazing. I'm serious. That's what it happened. So I love that you yeah. guys are bringing that it's, to people. It's the perfect prep work. You know, it's just preparing mm -hmm. the body. Just like you mm -hmm. have a warm up before you start an intense workout. Like this is your warm up before you go in your ice bath. Totally. Yeah. And I have to add, you guys are maybe the first social self, social, what do you call it? Social wellness club. Social wellness club. But you're also maybe the first unbelievably sexy social wellness club <laughs> because like, I, you know, you guys got to go look at the website because one of my best, friend lives, li best friends lives in West Hollywood. And yeah. so as soon as I saw the website, I was like, uh, I like texted it to her. I'm like, look at this place. You have to go here. And then you guys opened one in New York City too, correct? So right now yeah, there's two locations. Up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's, they it's nice. Is real nice. Yeah. <laughs> you like to say it's designed to heal. You know, like environment plays a major role in the healing process, mm -hmm. and design is super important to me. And 
the first two are stunning and when people see the next two they're going to be even more blown away because it's we're really leaning in and pushing the design are those locations public yet or no one of them so we open soho in our second new york club in the spring so right around the corner and the other one that's opening this year we haven't been announced yet but coming soon okay awesome and then you guys do remote things too right so anybody listening could yeah so we, we do so we say we can remedy any event doesn't matter if it's coachella to art basel to Cannes film festival to a corporate event um you know no matter what the event is i think people are looking for that wellness edition and it's, it's just a perfect way to complement any gathering with the self-care you know we call it social self-care and it's usually like the highlight of all these events. It's fun. It's bonding. It makes people feel good. And it's, we never, I never thought we were going to an event business, but events have become a major part of our business. Mm. What kind of services have you done mostly at events? I'm assuming IV drips. We can do anything at the club, anywhere. Okay. Um, so we have mobile versions of everything if, if the budget is, uh, is there. But yeah, anything we offer in the club, and it's usually in a bigger format, like we can do a lot more people like the Coachella event we do with Tao, I think there's like a 1000 people. I mean, it's fun. So we can cater to any any group size. So you guys have done Coachella, you've been at Coachella doing okay. this stuff. How cool. We do it every year we partner with like so house partner with Tao group, we've done an event for HBO. Um, yeah, they're fun. Super cool. Okay. Well, tell me more about how you said that this social aspect kind of evolved naturally. So tell me more about that and why the social aspect, you know, is so important to you. Yeah. So what I realized, and as you, you probably know with all of your, you know, patients or clients, um, those five years in practice in order to fix the root causes of my patients issues in order for them to actually fix the root cause they had to make lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And over those years, the number one thing I heard over and over again was, you know, Dr. Leary, I feel incredible. All my problems are gone. You know, I'm pain free. That GI problem's gone. That auto my autoimmune condition's not flaring up. It would go on and on, all of these things. But then they would say, but this new lifestyle is really isolating. And they're like, everything that I normally do when I socialize now I've stopped doing because it's bad or feel, like we like to say it's like filled with temptation or toxins and I was like oh like this is this is probably the biggest problem that I have to figure out a solution for is being healthy should not make you more isolated because we know human connection is one of the most important things for our health mm -hmm. so I wanted to create a club that enhanced your health and your social life at the same time so initially the four years the first four years working on the business plan it was just a beautiful space. And because it was like a club atmosphere, that's why it was called a social wellness club. Cause it just looked like a so house, like a, my version of a so house. And, uh, and then it was the patience over those five years that really pushed me like, oh, wow. Like what if I just made each service social? And I was thinking, cause like a spa, mostly you go isolate yourself in every room, like, or your face down on a table. And even if you're with a therapist, there's no talking, there's no interacting other than you know, then massaging usually over facial. And I was like, all right, how do I do something the exact opposite of a spa and make sure that I'm also fixing this issue where how can I make this a date spa? How I can, how can I make this the replacement for a happy hour or brunch or, you know, what you would do for any event. So not only is it a replacement for your meeting spa, after work, hangout, your post-workout hangout, your date night, but it's also an event venue where we host people rent out the clubs either during club hours or in the evenings once we close. We call it a remedy after hours. And it's the perfect way to bring together, say it's any health and wellness company or product that doesn't have a venue. We've done the coolest events with the coolest brands. And we have so many lined up this year that, you know, instead of just renting out a restaurant or a hall somewhere, like why wouldn't you want to rent out remedy for the same price and you get unlimited open self care with it. So it's like, it matches the same price as co like competition, but then it also gives you so much more, especially as a wellness brand. And that's become really fun to see because then we also mm -hmm. get to like network and help also promote and, you know, use our network to showcase these brands. Mm. Super cool. I hope, I hope some people listening are like, 
you know, potential uh, customers or so to say of yours, because that what a great way to like send the message of I care about my people <laughs> from a company, yeah. you know, and super fun. Like I said, it's not just like it's not just going to like a clinic. It, it, your place does not look like a clinic. It looks like some like dreamy, you know, high end cool experience for people and then they're getting all that on top of it so good job with your business plan <laughs> and i hope well, people think of corporate wellness like think of you're building out if you're a company owner and you're trying to build out the strongest team possible your holiday right. parties your outings overfeeding your team and drinking alcohol is not helping you build a happier stronger healthier team you know so like corporate wellness has been really cool just to watch the transition of a lot of these big brands realizing like Oh, wait, why would I go spend money on giving my team alcohol, which is a depressant right. and dissociative, when I could be putting them in ice baths and saunas and hyperbarics and IVs? And it's cool because it's also just a really nice new bonding moment for the team where they get to know each other better. And so it's, it's also like a cool new memory. And I think when right. people have new experiences, that especially if it's their first time doing those things and you're as a company being the first to introduce them to a new practice that will make a big impact on their life. It's very cool to see. Totally. Totally. What a gift, you know, and it's it's cool because there's I mean, as a, a fellow health nerd and <laughs> health pro, like we all have these desires in our hearts of like, man, like just how can I help more people feel better? Because we know how you can feel. You don't know yeah. how good you can feel until you start feeling better. And then you're like, what? Like, oh, no, there's so many people like trapped in this fast food, no exercise, crappy sleep, blue light in their eyes till one o'clock in the morning, like disrupted circadian rhythm, like don't know how to, you know, don't have tools like ice baths or breath work or meditation and all these things to help them manage stress. So they're just like crumbling in it and then their food is inflaming them and you're, you know, and so it's yeah. it's just exciting to see. I, I get excited when fellow, you know, we're all on the same team here. Fellow health pros are able to create something like this. That's just introducing more people because, yeah, if you do your what is it, 16, 17 minute long breath work cold plunge class, because like 11 minutes of breath work, six minute up to six yeah. minutes cold plunge. Like that's something experiential that someone's going to walk away going maybe I'll do that more, you know? And a lot yeah. of times, even though ice baths and things have become more popular, there's still a lot of people who have never tried breath work, who have never done an ice bath. And then when they get yeah. in that environment and they experience how they feel after, that's that sticks with you so much more than just being told, hey, go try this. And some people never will, you know? So yeah. good job creating those experiential opportunities for people to have a taste of how much better they can feel. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. I want to ask you since like, cause I was reading um, kind of like you have on your website, like your professional journey. Right. And you mentioned yeah. this a little bit when you were doing the one-on-one, -on -one, like a big goal of yours was to help people for prevent surgery. And I just want to like, hang on this for a second with you since I'm like, yay, <laughs> right? Because so many, I get comments on social media like, oh, I, I can't wait to try this workout after my back surgery. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying no across the board, but oh my gosh, please try everything you can to not go that route. And so I was wondering if you could share just some pearls of wisdom or insights um, for maybe somebody who they're having a lot of, let's say back pain, since that one's so common, yeah. they're having a lot of chronic pain. And they've gone to Western medicine. Western medicine says, yep, surgery is your only option. What would you say to that person? Yeah, I, it's tricky, right? I, right? I never want to talk negatively about our healthcare system. And I think there's a time and place for most right. drugs and surgeries. But I think as a first line of intervention, automatically, if unless it's an emergency, right. you never have surgery as a first line of intervention. If you have tried multiple things and explored other things that could work mm -hmm. and it continually fails, I would still say, you know, you might just not be with the right practitioner and you might need to try a different practitioner because everyone has their own styles. But it's scary. You know, going under the knife is a, is a big decision. And, you know, back surgeries, for example, aren't 
the most successful things. And I think underlying the reason why people are in pain is because they're not biomechanically moving correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need to think of is one, how are we restoring motion and restoring proper motion in the body usually fixes most pain problems. And it sounds so simple, but it, it really is. And here's mm -hmm. the thing, like if you're in pain and you're taking medication to numb it, pain meds numbing your pain isn't going to fix your biomechanical issues. It's not going to help you move better. If anything, you're going to move, not feel the things that you're doing to aggravate it. And then when the pain meds wear off, you're going to be in more pain. And that creates this, you know, really nasty snowball effect where people get addicted to opioids. And I think mm -hmm. it's like we just need to move and we need to restore motion and we need to get blood flow there. And we need to look at the joints and we need to look at the muscle and we need to look at the fascia. And we need to look at your diet and we need to look at your biochemistry and look at your, you know, all your vitamin and mineral levels and look at your hydration mm -hmm. levels. And like, it's crazy when you just make a couple small changes and people feel better. Like I remember like over and over again in my practice, even after one session, like, Oh my God, I, f I feel better. Oh my God. That feels so much better. I'm like, that's one hour. Like if that should give you hope that, you know, like, Hey, if I'm just restoring motion and I'm showing that I can do that in an hour. And then if the new motion is making you feel better, that is a good sign that mm -hmm. we can make a lot of progress. And obviously that there is, like I was saying, there is a time and place where maybe you wait right. too long, there's too right. big of a trauma where, you know, you need it. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's like, the amazing benefit of our healthcare system is in right. emergency and advancements we have made in surgery. That's great. But mm -hmm. back surgery is a big one. And it's, it's mm -hmm. hard because, you know, I grew up in a small town in Rhode Island and then I moved to LA and now I live in LA and New York and I have access to a lot of people that can help get me to move better. Mm -hmm. But what I'm finding like with my friends or family that live in these small towns, you know, it's hard because they don't have the right resources of the people that were really trained in this type. So sometimes mm -hmm. you might have to travel, sometimes you might have to figure out ways. And that's where it's a little sad because usually that costs money, right? And I mm -hmm. think the time and the intention that goes into teaching a patient and giving them the tools and we're working on them takes a lot of time. And I'm hoping that eventually our insurance industry catches up on, hey, like, this is what works. We should cover it and give people this as the first line of intervention, like I was saying. But yeah. I would say, like, in short, make sure to explore all options unless it's an emergency. And just know that a lot of the times, like myself or a lot of individuals that have, do the same work as me, we see it every day. And don't just trust if one person tells you that you need surgery, that you have to get surgery. Mm -hmm. so, you know, if you go to a surgeon, that's, that's all they're trained to do that. You know, like when you go to your medical doctor, or your physical asking about nutrition and everything that you and I probably teach, they might have a little glimpse of education on that, but they studied medicine. Like their job is to analyze the symptom, mm -hmm. prescribe the medicine. So mm -hmm. I think it's, that's what they're trained to do. Same thing as a surgeon. So just explore your options and mm -hmm. try to just try to understand your body. The more you can understand your body, especially when you have the right, you know, people in your life and people on your team to help you learn how to move better. Even when you start feeling a flare up, you'll start learning how to take care of it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you hit on, <laughs> there's so many factors going into, let's say chronic pain, right? Like for yeah. example, when I get questions about people are like, you know, they say like, well, I have like arthritis in my hand, so I can't do that weight exercise. It's like my mind goes to so many different, it's, it's like, what are you eating? Do you have an undiagnosed autoimmune disease? Yeah. Like, are you eating tons of inflammatory foods? Like, do you have muscle that's like helping support all your joints and bones? Do you, you know, are you sleeping? Are you, you know, it, it, I think that some, you know, we're, we're like both pretty big into holistic health, which is, it's all of these things. And I think we've been in this, we've been in this paradigm, at least in the United States, but I'd say in a lot of other places in the world where it's, everything is like 
uh, I have this issue. There's this reason and there's this solution. It's like one, 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 you know, whereas holistic yeah. health, we're aware that it's everything, you know, everything it's, 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 it is your sleep. It is your stress levels. It is the fact that you're drinking every night. It is the fact that you're eating inflammatory foods. It is the fact that you don't work out. It is, you know, and as, as overwhelming as, as, as that might sound for someone who's not like doing any of those things and having some issues, I, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but like, if you can just make one, if you can just work on one thing and you get a little taste of how much better you can feel instead of it feeling like this overwhelming list of like, I have to do this, 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 and this it's, I can't wait to try something else now and see how much better I can feel. Can you speak yeah. on that? Cause I know you probably see that since yeah. you guys offer so many different things from like maybe hyperbaric oxygen for someone who has, you know, poor cognitive function or TBI or something like that. And then they start regularly doing hyperbaric and they're like, uh, I just got my whole life back or somebody who had massive B vitamin deficiencies and a simple methylated B complex. And now they're like, wow, my brain works, you know? So can you talk about, um, just in your experience, like simple steps that have become catalysts to people like changing into, I want to do these things to feel better versus I have to do all these things. Yeah. I think even just to note one thing before you were saying before, I think like one thing that is hard for a lot of people to understand. And I think this thing that we might overdo or wrongfully do in our healthcare system is that we overdiagnose. And I think when people get labeled like arthritis, they they use that as a handicap. And right. you're not handicapped with arthritis. Everyone has arthritis. If you're an adult, you have arthritis somewhere. You know, and like you were saying, it's all right. All itis means is inflammation of. This is very simple. Let's look at what's causing inflammation. Yeah. What can we do to minimize inflammation? And I think like even not even going into remedy and thinking about hyperbaric chambers, it's it's so simple. It's like move. If you're not moving, move, go walk. You don't even need to go lift weights. Right. If you're not moving and you went for a walk every day and you got your steps in, you're going to feel so much better. Right. And I look at food, like food is the most important thing. You know, anything that you put in or on your body is either fueling or fighting disease. Mm -hmm. We put such crap in our body and then we wonder one day why we get sick. And it's like, your body's resilient till it's not. Right. And like your body's really good at healing itself, but only for so long. And if you just actually start implementing things way in advance, like it's kind of sad. So I think in my practice, women do an amazing job at taking care of themselves. Men, I don't know if it's an ego thing or if it's, you know, it's not, it's not manly enough to do it, but like getting care or like being preventative was never a thing yeah. for men. Yeah. All of my male patients, it took an injury before they start understanding the value of their health. And this is interesting where it's like most people never understand the value of their health until something wrong goes or something really mm -hmm. bad happens or they get diagnosed. And I think like for anyone listening, it's like, don't be that person that waits for something that traumatic or getting diagnosed to something or feeling terrible and to making change. It's like if you're born with a healthy body, I forgot if it's like 80 or 90% of adult conditions are like 90 something percent due to our lifestyle. And if you know that, and you even know like the study of epigenetics and epigenome, like we control our future. And your body is your number one asset and everything in your life is better when you're healthier. You're going to be happier. You're going to be more successful. You're going to be more creative. You're going to be a better friend. You're going to be a better partner. You're going to be a better parent. You're going to sleep better. You're going to move better. Everything is better exponentially. And you'll realize that life gets easier and life gets way more enjoyable. And it's not even just being healthy to be healthy. Like it being healthy ripples into every aspect of your life. And it's wild to me. And the thing is like, you and I get access to our life. And I think I had people in my life that I loved so much. And, you know, 
they thought because they were skinny that none of this stuff mattered. You know, it's like, we can do anything we want. We eat cheese and pasta and they like Italian food all the time. And I'm like, it used to bug me so much. And I used to be that guy that was like, what, guys, what do you not understand? Like, this is so bad for you. And like, and they, I think even at times they thought it was funny. And then it was like nine years later, I'm not gonna say who it was, like after me trying to, I kind of gave up with this group of people. And a sense of like, I didn't, you can't make someone want to be healthy. And I realized I'm like, this is causing a strain on our relationships. And then one day I got a call and they're like, John, you were right. I'm like, about what? Cause I like changed my diet like this month. And my whole life is different. Like I have so much more energy, all like my mood's better. And I'm like, yeah, did you think I was lying this whole time? You know, <laughs> but I think it's impossible. Ready. it's impossible to turn on someone's light switch. That's what yeah. I, that's where I was going with this is yeah. You can't make someone want to take care of themselves. You can't make someone want to want to work on their development and their growth. And just like you can't make someone want to take care of their health. And I think, unfortunately, it's either an external thing where something bad happens and then you're forced to, or like the whole pandemic where the whole world shut down and we realize the virus can take down all of these people. Um, or it might just be an amazing experience. Like you said, like it might, you might have exited your first ice bath because your your company made you do a corporate event and instead of going to dinner you went and did an ice bath and you hate cold and all of a sudden you get out and you're like oh wow i've never felt this good oh wow i slept better oh wow like i'm not in pain and you're like sometimes an experience can bring on that light switch or a trauma or maybe it's just the influence of the people around you and that's what i really realize is mm -hmm. as someone's care provider I can't make you want to take care of yourself, but I hopefully can inspire you. So I always would say, is, like, is your doctor the healthiest person you know? And it's like, I need to lead by example. I need to practice what I preach. And if I'm telling a patient to do something and I don't do it, how am I ever going to build trust? Because that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing. So, you know, luckily for me, it pushed me to take care of my health to a whole nother level. I was reminded every day by patients that, I should not take my life for granted and all the things like being able to move, being able to breathe, being able to all these things that I was so fortunate to be given. Mm -hmm. As even like I look at alcohol, I look at these things and I'm like, why would I put a talk? Why would I even I would pay if you were paying to put toxins in their body and they like, this is fun. And it's like, no, it's depressing and everyone's depressed and that we have all these mental health problems, but you're drinking every night to unwind and you're like, wait, duh, of course you're not going to get better if you've been drinking a depressant every night and right it's it's hard it's just the awareness is changing so fast right now and that's the good part and it's even cool to watch like the drinking culture drastically change generationally yeah. like people are drinking less it's not as cool and right i think soon as awareness keeps shifting this whole industry is really just starting and mm -hmm. i think people are really opening up to alternative medicine they're really looking up to uh any holistic practice and self-care and and using their health to be more successful and it's just it's happening fast i think when i was pitching remedy 12 years ago people were like why would people go to a spa more than once a month and i'm like it's not a spa like people are gonna go do self-care every day you know and they didn't get it and now it's now everyone gets it mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh man i kind of want to i love that rant you just went on and i kind of want to backtrack to um men Okay, like the whole the, your topic about like men and self care, like I, I'm sure you've noticed the same thing, especially because of like kind of the the realm that you're in. Like, there's a, what I have noticed is the men who are most likely to get into health and take care of themselves are like entrepreneurs or business or like they have some sort of reason that they want to feel optimal, and it's usually connected to either athletics or business. Right. Yeah. But they, they need a strong enough reason. And I think that applies to pretty much all humans. Like there's the way I see it is like if I'm maybe a, a, a dog. <laughs> OK. And there's a big lion behind me. I might. That's one reason that causes behavior change is fear is that you'll start running if there's a big predator coming at you, right? And so if people have a cancer scare or insane pain that they can't walk or some sort of injury or something like that, 
fear of this is getting worse and this is scary will motivate behavior change, but so will a juicy steak, right? So yeah. if the dog is sitting there and there's a big old juicy steak, it'll also start running towards the steak. And so we're also heavily motivated to change our behaviors when there's a, a, a perceived prize that makes it worth it to go running for it, right? But if you yeah. tell a dog that's laying there to just start running, it's probably not going to unless it has a reason, right? So we're similar, right? And so I like that you're bringing this up because I do, I agree with you that in general, like we take some man, I don't know, in Kansas who's got like three kids and he's working full time and maybe he coaches his son's football team or something like it's not typical that these guys are like health nuts you know what I mean yep. <laughs> it's not typical and I I don't know I just wanted to really highlight that because it makes me sad you know and you're right that I do feel like it's not like all women are into self-care but it that we are I would say more likely it's more socially encouraged for women yep. to take care of themselves kind of from like the beauty programming or whatever it is maybe the desire to yeah. be beautiful or whatever the, the societal programming does push women a little harder, which like kind of leads us into these places. Right. Yeah. But men, men are lagging behind and it's not cool. It's sad. You know, like we want our men to be feeling amazing. They deserve to be feeling amazing, especially the dad who's busting ass all day, every day, taking care of his family, working, you know, like in order to make that a more enjoyable life experience for him, if he can start feeling better He'll be able to do that with so much more joy, so much more ease, you know. So I just want to take a minute to kind of highlight that. And for men listening or women, if this applies to you, like start thinking about that juicy steak. Like what is the juicy steak for you in terms of feeling better every day, right? Like what will that provide you with? You know, entrepreneurs, they, uh, men, I don't know. I, do you agree? Like entrepreneurial men, a lot of them at some point are like, I need more energy so I can keep producing at these levels. So I got to be in tip top shape. And there's almost like an ego thing with it a little yeah. bit, but cool, whatever gets them there. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But for the everyday dude, like, I just want to say for a second, you guys deserve to feel good. You No, not good. You deserve to feel amazing. You know, yeah. and so I just want to highlight that for a second. Because wouldn't you say you feel pretty amazing, Dr. Leary? Yeah. Like, wouldn't you? I mean, like, <laughs> I, because I've been working on this for so long, and this wasn't mm -hmm. something that, like, my health is all, like, good now. Like, I, when I moved to LA 12 years ago, like, that's when I started really understanding health in a different way. Mm -hmm. And, like, my diet, my routines, like, it, it didn't just start a couple of years ago. Like, it's been a work in progress for 12 years, and it's, I think it's like it is hard work and it is challenging at times and that's when you grow like yeah you need i always say like there's this one quote like change is being better than your environment like if you want to change you need to change you know and i think it's really important that things that are hard that are difficult that require discipline that make you uncomfortable like that's where that's the state that you need to be in to grow and i think it is intimidating with health and it's not about how you look it's about how you feel right right and i think it's, it's like you can always feel better and there's no limit like this this isn't a finish line it's it's your life you know and it's like why wouldn't you want to see how good life could be or how good life could feel if you know it's exponential you know it's like i'm chasing every day to see like how can I push the boundaries not to have better statistics or to like right. hit a certain goal or like to be more successful? All of those are secondary. For me, it's like I have one life. I'm on this earth. I'm young. I have my whole life ahead of me. I have a big mission. Like why wouldn't I want to see how good this life could be? And nothing else matters without your health. And it's, it's just – the more that you start to really understand it, you're like, uh, like that, like it's, right. it's a no. Yeah. And I just like, I feel like every year that I've worked on myself and my health, every year is better. My relationships are better. My happiness is better. My working relationships are better. My business is better. Like everything is better. And it's like, oh, wow. Like, can I just keep getting better? And it's like, yes, I can. Yeah.
Exactly. I, I, the, my, you know, close followers are probably like laughing. They're like, is that Tara or Dr. Leary talking? I I could, I mean, I couldn't agree more is exactly how I feel. And I, I did, I came from standard American, I was standard American diet most of my adult life. Right. Like I'm talking bad, like McDonald's multiple times a week, my kids, macaroni and cheese, like baked goods all the time. I mean, Kool-Aid. That that says a lot. Like we we had Kool Aid dinner almost every night. You know what I mean? Just put a cup of sugar in there. Jeez, you know, a cup of sugar. That's the recipe for Kool Aid. It's insane, and I'm feeding that to my kids. And oh my gosh, you know. That's another um, reason. Like thinking of that, like your life before and my life as a child. Like also when you're developing as a kid, those are the most important years. Yeah. But then you realize, like, oh, like. I'm healthy now, but I have to work so much harder because me being skinny as a kid was not me being healthy. Me being active doesn't mean that I'm fully healthy. Like I put a lot of things in my body, like fast food and sugar for a long time. And I'm like, and then college and high school when you're drinking alcohol and you're like, oh, I gotta, that's what I need to reverse. That's what I need to recover from. Um, Cause those, that damage is inside our body. We don't always see mm-hmm. the damage inside our body. We only see that external damage and you know, it, i sometimes say i wish our bodies were clear even though that would be gross so we could see <laughs> in school i worked on cadavers for two years and i was dissecting human bodies and i that's that was my biggest wake-up call when seeing every different type of body type and then dissecting them and opening up every organ and you're like oh this is disgusting like there's fatty cysts there's all these bifurcation the liver is like a rock like and you just realize like oh oh like this is what happens like even the body on the outside looks normal and healthy right it can be so so unhealthy on the inside and that was a big wake-up call for me Mm, i bet i uh that's funny you bring that up because it's just the other night like my daughter who's 18 i have four kids my daughter who's 18 was saying (laughs) i was telling her about i was like do you know how big the liver is have you ever seen a liver i was like pull it up on youtube go look search liver cadaver and she goes oh my gosh you watch cadaver videos and i'm like yeah all the time with kyle her brother i'm like we love this stuff it's fascinating you know i mean you kind of got to get over your little bit of like ewey but like get over it because it's once you start to see actually what the inside of the body looks like and she was like this is amazing she's watching like a like a live liver transplant of someone who had just passed like they were getting it ready she's like this is fascinating you know And it is, I think it's healthy for us to actually take a look. You can access it all for free on YouTube. It's probably not as, you know, a big of an impression as in real life, but it's still like, oh, I see there's actually, because my daughter kept going, that's all inside of me. Oh my gosh. Like she's seeing the intestine. She's like, that's all in me. Uh, You know, we forget that. Like, we just think it's like this like void in there. No. These are yeah. actual parts that affect our day-to-day reality and our future that like are vastly wildly impacted by the choices that we're making on the daily. So I like that you brought that it's up. Incredible. It's like once you start seeing that, you're like, you understand how incredible the human body is. Like you don't have to right. think about any of the stuff working, it just works. Like how crazy is that that all of these systems I know. work together for you to function? And then it's like, it's like looking at a car and never understanding what's under the hood or how it works or runs it. It's like, if your body's your number one asset and you have no idea how it works or even like what it is or what it does, it's like, this should be the most studied thing in our education system is like our body and how to take care of it and how it works. And hopefully as this awareness shifts, it becomes a major part of our education. But yeah, go on YouTube, go on anything. Just like Mm -hmm. it is so cool to learn more about the body and it's so fascinating the more that you know and the more that you know about your body the better you're able to take care of it yeah and now we take care of your body better than you yeah yeah it's building a relationship with it and first you have to acknowledge its, its existence and especially the insides of our body yeah. so yeah um i i uh i want to hit a little bit on some of the before we end here, I want to hit on a couple of the things like vitamin drips and shots. Okay. So these have been become popular, right? And also um, hyperbaric. I feel like more and more people are becoming aware of that. Like, 
okay, for example, uh, I do DNA testing and hair mineral analysis and blood labs and stool testing yeah. and all these kind of things in my coaching, right? And for me, like I'm aware that I have some high genetic predispositions to need to be, to, I have a higher need for methylated B vitamins are pretty life changing for me, you know? And yeah. so for somebody like that, like for me to go in and get a, an IV drip, uh, straight into my bloodstream of B vitamins is like such a gift, you know? And so I was wondering if you could hit on this or hyperbaric or like what in, in terms of, in light of what we just talked about, like how these things can be powerful gifts for the right person. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. The supplement industry is a very, very, very big business. And I'm calling it a business because it's more of a business than yep. an industry. Yeah, it is the most loosely regulated thing yep. I've ever seen, and it kills me when people are investing and spending the money to be better because they're reading whatever is on the bottle or whatever is marketed by this miracle supplement that's going to fix all of your problems. When a lot of the times it's a synthetic compound that your body doesn't recognize and it flushes it out and it's expensive urine and it stresses your liver and kidneys. It's like right, right. There are supplements are made to supplement your diet. If you can't get it, it's very hard in the American diet, no matter how good you are, to have a full balanced diet. Yep. So I think it is needed to some extent. And this is where the difference between an IV or a vitamin shot, like you were saying, and then taking a supplement is it bypasses the GI tract. So it's going right into the bloodstream. You're getting it's 100% bioavailable. Right. There's no, are you absorbing it? Are you not? So you <laughs> right. see it and you see it. And I, it does drastically change the bioavailability. It does drastically change all of your blood work. A lot of the times, a lot of our symptoms are a result of our deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to locate those deficiencies and then not just take a bunch of vitamins because you think they're all good for you. Right. Very specific. Like I almost would. Rather, you go take a micronutrient blood test and make that investment to understand what you're deficient in and then only take the supplements based on what you need. And then just know that your needs are always changing. Your lifestyle is always changing. Your diet's yeah. always changing. So if you've been on the same vitamins for six months, a year, five years, 10 years, maybe you don't need them. <laughs> maybe they're, maybe I, t I had so many patients that were on supplements for, years five ten decade and then they get their blood work and they're like how am i deficient i take that every day and i'm like well i'm sorry to tell you but like your body just wasn't absorbing what you were taking or maybe that synthetic mm -hmm. compound your body didn't agree with and mm -hmm. i've eaten really cool and i think also it's it's not only the nutrients but it's the hydration if you look at the average more than the average individual everyone's dehydrated and what's crazy is it's so simple if you don't drink water, you're dehydrated. If you're dehydrated, you're going to be stiff. You're going to have digestive problems. You might have headaches. You're going to be in more pain. It's like, go drink a lot more water. Make sure to have your minerals. And an IV does help with the, the fast hydration, especially like mm -hmm. after a long flight. It's something like every three hours in the, in the air, you lose up to a liter and a half of water. Wow. And then you have people drinking alcohol, which is a diuretic right. in the air. And coffee, well, coffee right. and alcohol. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, so you're dehydrated. You're further dehydrating yourself. Do you know how bad it's like the, the worst time to ever have alcohol is on a plane? Totally. Um, <laughs> but I think that's where like after, even if you don't drink the alcohol and no matter how much water you're drinking, like an IV before or after you fly is really beneficial because it also has mm -hmm. the hydration. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> I, a friend of mine has a mineral, it's like a nano mineral company and their little like slogan is test don't guess. And I'm like, yes, test don't guess. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure you get it all the time. I get it all the time too. It's like, what supplements do you take? And I'm like, I'm not telling you. I don't want yeah. to tell you what I take because you're just going to start randomly. You don't, you don't, I, I did labs to know that I'm, I, and I might exactly right. Like I might not need to take this D3 with K2 that I'm taking now that I moved to Hawaii, I got to test again and see if I need it or not, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you might not need that. So find out what you need and then do that and then test again to make sure you still need it. And there's like a fundamental like 
this doesn't like exist in the way of thinking, right? It's because everyone's yeah. been marketed to so much. I'm like, yeah, there are like thousands of supplements that are awesome. But yeah. fine, if you could, you know, let's say, cool, L-carnitine, great, go ahead, you know, but like, <laughs> or I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Now we're going to be like, L-carnitine, looking it up. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, find out, you know, you could maybe need a boost in vitamin D and maybe you don't. But if you don't find out, you don't know. So, and it's it's pretty inexpensive to test for some things. You know, you can yeah. get some basic labs in a very affordable way. And then, yeah, yeah, it is cool if you find out you have some like higher need for something and to to do like a shot or a vitamin drip. It's super valuable, right? Especially you're right because yeah. most supplements suck. Most of them do. Some of them are great, but yeah. Still, you don't really know what your absorption is. No one can really know that. You know, it's, yeah. it depends on so many factors, your cellular inflammation, your gut and health and all of that. So it's a nice thing to have to boost health. And then, okay, last thing is like hyperbaric oxygen. For those who aren't familiar, can you explain a little bit about what that is and what it does? Yeah. I mean, oxygen is powerful. Think of like all the biochemical reactions in your body. When you have more oxygen, things work better. So I think when injured, when recovering, when repairing, when dealing with anything, by delivering more oxygen to that area is going to help speed up the recovery. So with with hyperbarics, depending on if it's mild pressure to high pressure chamber, there's just different pressures that oxygen can be pushed into your body. And depending on what you're trying to recover from, you know, all those different atmospherical pressures that are more or less beneficial. But at the end of the day, this oxygen chamber, just know that, you know, like got really popular. They've been around for a very long time, but you had like mm -hmm. LeBron James going in every day and that was a big headline. Then you had Michael Jackson used to sleep in his or mm -hmm. Justin Bieber was using his for Lyme disease. And, mm -hmm. you know, just know that it's a, it's a definitely a more expensive um, treatment, but it is highly beneficial. And if, if the timeline of your recovery is important, if you have to be better by a certain date, hyperbaric chambers make a significant impact, and especially for like concussions, where there's also things mm -hmm. like you have a concussion, all you are told is like, go and rest. Right. And like, not real good treatment protocols for concussions, but hyperbaric chambers, there's a lot of studies for hyperbaric chambers and, and concussions because it's just getting more oxygen to the brain. I think that's a really good understanding of like something where people are just told to rest and it'll get better on its own and something like a hyperbaric and just put more oxygen there heals faster but think of that with anything that you're you're dealing with mm -hmm. okay let's real quick just like let's say somebody has like a not like a severe concussion but they got a concussion right like maybe playing a sport or something like what type of frequency i don't know if you can really say because it, it depends on the person and all of that but are we talking yeah. like multiple times a week, you know, like what can someone expect for just like a typical concussion and they wanted to try that out? Yeah. Uh, legally, I can't prescribe. I say, or okay. But if it was me, um, depending on the pressure, mm -hmm. you can go in a hyperbaric chamber every single day. Like if mm -hmm. I was suffering with something, I would be in that hyperbaric chamber every single day. And then mm -hmm. different treatment protocols for anything. But mm -hmm. You know, especially with mild pressure chambers, like you really can't overdo it. You know, I okay. think like in the mild pressure, you can go up to like four hours in a day and then you can go more, but then it won't actually change your blood saturation levels. So there's like limitations where it's never bad. It just might not do anything over more of a certain point, mm -hmm. uh, but it changes per per situation. Yeah. And then, you know, to our earliest point, it's like on when you get specific care you're you might also you know get some advice on nutrition and supplementation and maybe some yeah. labs done and like that whole approach can expedite healing so much faster than just you know doing hyperbaric but then going and getting mcdonald's and drinking a, a big gulp of soda after and staying up till two o'clock in the morning watching stuff and waking up at six and <laughs> all that stuff that. yeah <laughs> all right um so okay if people like when they were listening earlier, if they were like, oh, my gosh, I got to bring my business to do they just to you guys? I mean, or have you guys come there or go to your place? Yeah. Do they just go to remedyplace.com to do that? You can go, 
You can go to our website. You can message us on Instagram. Okay. Anything that we're on, uh, there's always a contact point, and our team is super efficient and super super butt buttoned up on behind the scenes. So like, no matter who you reach out to, nice. they'll always put them in the right direction. And then we can set you up with our events and partnership team. Okay, cool. And then to kind of uh, repeat, your current locations that are open are in West Hollywood. And then what is it called? Flatiron? Is that the area in New York City? Yeah, Flatiron. Flatiron. Yeah. So I highly recommend for a little uh, dopamine, maybe oxytocin, I don't know, something boost. Just go look at their website. You'll just like be like, I want to go there. So if you're ever in those areas, if you live in those areas, definitely check it out. But if you're visiting, obviously, those are pretty popular places to visit. That might be a, a fun way to, you know, jump off the plane, drop into Remedy Place, like have your whole like high, deluxe luxury health experience, meet some cool people who are on the same path as you and, you know, then go along your, with your on your merry way. So um, it's actually Leary, good, good job. Thank you for creating this. Thank you for taking the time to come and share with us today. Um, any last I'll, I'll give you one last w word of wisdom, you know, of, of health advice yeah. that you feel is needed in the world today. Yeah, I think just give it a shot and take control and like just know that your health is in your hands and really only your hands. And the more you can study and learn, the more you learn about yourself, it's not about the fancy technologies or fancy treatments. Like those are the nice cherry on top but the foundational pillars are by far the most important. And I think, you know, for us, like, even if you're not in LA or New York, we're next month, we're actually launching our free educational platform. And it's, it's promoting all the trainings that you would ever need to know about everything in your body and setting yourself up for, up for success in every vertical of your life. And it's for anyone anywhere. It's free. You don't need the fancy tools. And I think nothing is sold on there. Nothing's promoted on there. It is as like open and honest and trustworthy as possible and just know that it's like no matter where you are you can start making change and and that's really what we want to use our brand to do moving forward awesome so maybe follow you guys on social media at is it at remedy place is that the handle and yeah. then they can see that pop up when you release it maybe it'll already be out by the time this releases so definitely look for that on their social medias and website all right thank you so much dr leary appreciate you coming on Thank you.